are the takeoff, one of the most popular topics of 2020, you could say. Undoubtedly, one of the most tricky parts of any beginner or even intermediate surfer's journey, and one that is pivotal to their success on a wave. So, how do great surfers make it look so easy and effortless? Mobility, some people might say, positioning, stability, and paddle strength are all valid topics, and I want to chat about them today, and most importantly, give you guys some on-land exercises to improve. If you're new here, my name is Kale. I'm a surfer and a filmmaker, and here you'll find all sorts of epic surf content like tutorials to help you surf better, important reviews, and more. So subscribe down below and join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. This episode is brought to you by the Ultimate Surf Skate Program. Finally, it's a controlled system to help you progress your surfing using on land surf skate training techniques and routines. Check it out via the link in the description below. What is up guys, it's good to see you again. My name is Cal Rock, I'm a surfer and a filmmaker and I feel like I haven't been here for a while because I've been so busy kitting out the van. This is now my home. I'm super excited, I'm turning into a 14 part series for you guys and I'm super excited to release it. But today, I want to talk about the takeoff. It's been coming up a lot lately and previously I've explored the idea of mobility for takeoffs and I still think it's a very important point but now I want to really explore the idea of stability in a big way but also talk about the steps in place that are really important for an effective and easy takeoff. Let's just make it easy shall we? The first thing that I want to chat about is paddling. Paddling will make your takeoff so much easier. If you can paddle really fast and generate enough momentum to match the momentum of the wave you're trying to catch, then your takeoffs are going to be incredibly easy. They will feel effortless. This is really exemplified by great surfers. I remember surfing um, with Kaloe Andino at Trestles and he was absolutely destroying the session because he could sit out further than everybody else. And I've never seen someone stroke into waves so easily as this guy. He was doing it patiently, he was doing it respectfully, but he was sitting out further than everyone else, and he was catching him with the utmost ease because his paddling was out of this world. So the main thing with paddling, and I've talked a lot about this before, is that banana shape. And we use this banana shape for a couple of reasons. We use it to protect the neck, but we also to we also use it to ensure endurance throughout the entire session because those middle back muscles are a lot stronger, a lot more stable than your neck muscles and your arm muscles. So in order to train those, I've talked about this before, I want you guys to start doing some YTWs. To put this into context, I do these exercises at least once a week, and I'm an advanced surfer. So basically what we're doing, we're lying over a Swiss ball, and we're making a Y shape with our arms, then a T, and then a W. And we're doing that by squeezing the shoulder blades together, and we're pointing our thumbs up to activate the correct musculature in the shoulders. This will fatigue you really quickly, and it might even surprise you just how hard it is, but it's a great and effective exercise routine to get stuff happening. Now let's talk about positioning, the next elephant in the room, one of the most important parts of a good takeoff. This is where I want the surfer to be. Why isn't the surfer there? There's a, these are good questions to ask. I want the surfer to be in a spot where they can catch the wave and be propelled out in front of the white water. Taking off in white water is incredibly difficult to do. So ideally what I want to see is the surfer facing the wave as long as possible before they catch it. And they can do that in a variety of ways. They can paddle sideways for the wave, they can paddle towards it like I just did then. How do you think the surfer is going to fare if they're in a position like this where they can hardly see the wave and they have to look back over their shoulder? They've seen the wave, they've turned around, they've spotted it, 
and they're going to commit 100%, what's going to happen is the white water is going to catch them. They're going to probably topple over because it's incredibly hard to pop up in white water. And then they're going to waste all that energy in getting back out to the lineup. If we compare these two side by side, which one do you think is a more informed choice when it comes to catching a wave? I would much rather see you catch five waves on the face as opposed to 50 waves in the white water. The chances of actually catching 50 waves in the white water are pretty low because it takes so much energy to deal with. It is so much easier to take off on the clean face and that's why it's important to position yourself accordingly. Ideally, in this circumstance, for instance, I wanted the surfer to paddle out that way. If we follow the arrow, this trajectory would have taken him to that just under the lip position where he could have actually outran it and got ahead of the white water with an easier takeoff. Now previously what you're not seeing is I was surfing with this surfer before I started filming and when I was out there um, sort of coaching him into position, he did incredibly well. So this is really key is that positioning is so, so important. And what I like to do is encourage people to sit out further than they think they need to, visualize the waves that they want, and make sure they're in position for them by facing them as long as possible. And again, we can do that in, uh, we can make sure we catch waves uh, even though we're facing them in a myriad of ways. I like to paddle on an angle to catch waves. I love to be out of position slightly at the start so that I can paddle into position on an angle and then take off. The other way you can do it is to sit slightly further in, but then paddle out towards the wave, do the pivot and swing, sit up on your board, sit back towards the tail, swing around, and then put a couple of strokes in and you'll be on the wave. These are much better scenarios. If we have a look at some of this GoPro footage, you'll see, look how many times I'm looking at the wave. I'm never looking straight towards the beach until then. Okay, so it's the last minute uh, thing to actually look straight towards the beach. The, the entire time, the, the five to 10 seconds before I catch a wave, it's all dedicated to sideways or angled positioning. Similar example here. All right. Okay, now let's talk about the takeoff. We'll talk about mobility and stability together here because I think they're both valid and important factors in a good takeoff. And one thing I want to um, draw your eyes to, draw your attention to, is a particular moment in the, the hips and the lower back. Have a look here. See the surfer on the left, which is me. You see my back is quite arched. Look, my, I have lordosis, right? My lower back is, is arched inwards and my hips are raised. You can see my butt cheeks. Surfer over on the right, rounded back. What's the, what's the difference there? It's an activation of all the musculature that's going to stabilize the back and the hips and then the legs and then the rest of the body during that takeoff. I'm also looking up. Where you look is where you go. If I'm looking up, I'm going to get up. If I'm looking down and low, I'm going to end up falling and staying low. This is really key. So what I've actually done is um, incorporated some sort of functional fitness routines uh, to, to work on this positioning. Again, if we see here side by side, Again, that raised hip position to create space under the body to swing the legs through. You can do that by pushing the board away as well, but also really working on bringing those hips up in that strong activation of the core muscles. My favorite exercise to really work on the upward hip extension or contraction of the core is a jackknife. So a jackknife, pretty much you put your legs on a Swiss ball and you maintain that lower back arched position and you bring the ball under you with both feet or you can actually do it single leg at a time as well, which is much more advanced. It's important that you don't um, curl up as so much that you lose that curve in the lower spine. Now, from a stability perspective, what I like to focus on uh, in the gym, on land, is this exercise here. It's called a Superman. Basically, hanging myself over a ball, bringing up my legs, creating that lower back arch, and then taking my hands away one finger at a time, 
and learning how to balance and stabilize myself. This is really good for those micro muscles, those minute muscles, which help with stability. This is a, a dynamic surface under us. It's a Swiss ball, right? This is similar to a wave, a bucking, bumpy wave. And that's going to help us learn how to stabilize ourselves, maintain control as we enter a wave and go to pop up. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's been a while between drinks. I've been super busy on the van. Obviously, we just released the Ultimate Surf Skate series, the Ultimate Surf Skate program as well, which I'm super pumped about. It's a controlled, finally, a controlled system to help you progress your surfing using on-land surf skate techniques and routines. I'm so pumped to release that. And we've had over 200 people in the first night um, come, and, come and join that course, which was <laughs> amazing like I can't believe the this community that we've developed and, and you guys make this possible so I can't thank you enough um, everyone on my patreon uh, it, it gets tiered access to that program as well over the next couple of months plus uh, access to a whole bunch of surf uh, coaching analysis clips like like this one today so I um, again thank you so much if you guys enjoyed this video subscribe to the channel and don't forget, you can join me on Instagram as well, at Kale's Broccoli. I'm going to be sharing a whole bunch more van life stuff. I've deliberately kept this shot like kind of tight and a little bit interesting because I'm, I'm yet to show anyone the actual uh, van tour. So um, that's all coming as well. We're sort of branching out, getting creative. There'll always be surf content on here, tutorials, lifestyle stuff. Um, but we're going to mix in the van life stuff as well. Ew. Love you guys. Thanks so much.